Hey everybody, Jazzy here. I hope you're enjoying the Year of the Cat Coon event in Don't Starve Together. And I just wanted to show you something that I built recently in celebration of the event and hopefully give you a little bit of insight into how I approach some of these builds. Today we're going to build a Kit Coon nursery. So this is going to be where we take all of our Kit Coons, we drop them off and then occasionally come back to play hide and seek games with them and get some of those lucky coins for the event. So I'm actually going to try something that I've never tried before and that is to start a build in summer above ground with wildfires enabled. So to do this, I'm going to basically create a perimeter of wildfire protection, which is going to consist of an ice fling right in the center, and then at the edge of the Flingomatics range, we're going to plant four lure plants. Now, I explained this in the lure plant video guide, but essentially, Lure plants act as wildfire catchers. So if a wildfire triggers around your character, if there's a lure plant within range, then the lure plant will always start to smolder. So what this does in effect is create a 14 by 14 tile area in which as long as you're standing inside the area, the lure plant will be the first thing to smolder and then the flingomatic will immediately put it out. I just gotta be sure not to leave the area in the middle of the day, otherwise we might get a wildfire happening outside of the build. So for the middle of this zone, we're gonna have a play yard. This is where all the kit coons are gonna hang out and this is where we're gonna play hide and seek with them. So I'm making an approximation of a circle. That's gonna be the play yard. I think it's eventually gonna end up being more like an octagon. For the road around the center yard, I'm gonna use pink stone road turf. And that is one of the turfs added in the not enough turfs mod that I play with on my mega base world. I actually planted these lure plants much too soon. I planted them in spring and I didn't need them until summer. So we got a kind of a messy eye plant situation. So I just decided to take them down until the wildfire season started. So for the center zone, I'm going to use meadow turf from the Not Enough Turfs mod. Now, one of the big advantages to using these modded turfs is that they all block lure plants from spawning. So I don't need to worry about eye plants popping up on this modded turf while I'm building. I'm going to dig up these corner zones and put some rainforest turf down. And these corners are basically going to be mostly decorative. I might put in a couple extra nurseries and shrines just in case I want to move kit coons into like their own separate areas or control how many kit coons I play hide and seek with. For the center yard, I'm going to plant some grass tufts and plant some flowers, basically stuff that kit coons can hide behind during hide and seek that doesn't make it impossible to find them. With some of the larger structures, you can't even see the tail wagging when they're hiding behind it, so it just makes it easier to play the game with more grass tufts down. Now for the sides, I'm going to use pink park grass, and I think it'll be a really nice contrast to the meadow turf of the play yard. Kit Coons can actually hide behind carrots, so I'm going to plant a couple carrots in this yard by taking regular carrots and mutating them with infused lunar essence. This stuff you get during Hallowed Nights, you gotta craft a mad science lab and then make the infused lunar essence. But when you use it on a carrot, then it morphs into a carat. If there's a seed on the ground, then the carat will run over to it and eat it, and then it'll burrow into the ground. So it's a nice way of getting, you know, decorative carrots planted in areas. I had some leftover carnival trees from the Midsummer Carnival event when I activated it, and it actually fits perfectly into these corner zones when you rotated it diagonally. So I'm gonna plant one of these carnival saplings in each of the corner zones, and then I'll decorate them with cat coon stuff. One cool thing about building around a kit coon nursery is that you can play the hide and seek game while you're building. And before you place down too many structures, it's actually pretty easy to run the game because there's not as many places for the kit coons to hide. I had planted some berry bushes in the yard, but then I decided that it, they were too big. It was hard to find the kit coons when they were hiding behind them, and it was just getting too saturated in the center zone, so I dug them all back up. But I am going to craft up some of the cat toys that you can make at the shrine once you get a few of the lucky coins. I wish they gave us more of these cat toys for the event. I really like the way they look, the way they, the way the kit coons interact with them, you just don't get that many. I had this idea for the edge of the yard where I wanted to use moon rock walls and the new fence skins that we got with the event. And the tragedy here is color wise and design wise, they go really well together. But unfortunately, when you put them next to each other, they overlap each other terribly. It almost looks like the fences are connected to the moon rock walls, not on the ground. They're like floating over the ground. They also do this really weird overlap thing. So 
for that reason, I'm going to try building the walls with these two structures just not touching each other. It just means we're going to have to get a little creative about filling in the gaps. The entryways for the yard I'm going to have on the sides, and for those two edges, I'm just going to throw down some busted wood walls. I, you know, I try not to overuse this aesthetic, but in certain situations, it does look really good. Now for a couple more of these holes in the fencing, what I'm gonna do is smash down two wood walls and then place a conival tree sapling on top of them. I like this because it still fits with the shrubbery vibe of these walls, but it also breaks up the texture of the fencing. So I think what I'm gonna do for the pink park grass zones is put down some moon dials and then surround them with birch nut trees. And now I'm using some of the statues that we get from the event. You can craft both of the sketches for these statues at the shrine, and they're not too expensive. Once you play a few hide and seek games, you can get both of the sketches. So I'm gonna make a couple of the marble cat coon statues for the top of the yard, but the kit coon statues are actually really tall and slim, so I'm gonna use those for the outside of the build. It's nice to get a statue with this shape. They make really good corner pieces and you can see them sticking out from behind most of the structures in the game. So once summer's over, I'm going to smash the flingomatic, but I'm gonna keep the lure plants in place. They uh, they look good where they are. But yeah, I want the nursery to be in the center of this build. I think it makes the most sense. Yeah, try to hang around the deciduous forest during this event because the cat coons in the area, they'll be barfing out red pouches right and left, so you can collect a lot of coins passively. This cat coon might have even been unloaded. I just found a bunch of red pouches stacked on top of each other. I'm gonna put a couple more nurseries in these corner zones around the conival trees. And you know, they're cheap. They're only like one lucky coin each, so you can totally spam them. And the gobbler wobblers, I'm gonna make quite a few of them because I think they're gonna make nice corner pieces for these zones. So for the backs of these builds, I'm gonna go with moon rock walls for the corners and then the back sides we're gonna put iron fences. I had the moon rock to make solid moon rock walls in the back, but Honestly, you're not even gonna see the walls behind these deciduous trees, so you might as well just fill it in with fencing. Yeah, I'm getting so many red pouches from this event that I decided to use some of them as decor around the moon dials. I like planting flowers around moon dials, so this will be a nice little alternative to that. They kind of look like red flowers. Now at this point, I'm ready to start putting some glow caps down. Only problem is, I'm completely out of bone shards. So we're saying goodbye to Wanda for a moment and we're switching to the character who is the absolute best character at dying. But first we get to go on a little joyride with Wes and Sandy the Beefalo and Berger because it is log farming season. But once that's done, what I'm gonna do is take all these surplus life-giving amulets that I grabbed from Winter's Feast and I'm going to let Wes perish again and again. I had some options here, but I found that the fastest way was just to eat rot until Wes was starving, and then 10 seconds later, he's dead. There's probably quicker ways to do this, but for my time, this was plenty efficient. And then we're making 20 more life-giving amulets because we have the red gems, so let's do it. I think next time I'm in need of bone shards, I might just deconstruct some bone armor because as Wanda, I really don't use bone armor all that often. Anyways, we switch back to Wanda and we hammer all the skeletons. I got something around 63 or 64 bone shards, so that should be enough buckets of poop for the foreseeable future. Now, I'm gonna place some glow caps on the walkway. It's something that I don't normally do, but I think it's going to give us a decent spread of light for uh, the center zone. And yeah, it's looking good at night. So now I'm just gonna use some astral detectors to fill in a few of the dark spots on the outside parts. So we're going to start by putting two astral detectors around each of the conival trees in the corners, filling in the outer edges of these zones with iron fence. Now for the inner part of these corner builds, I'm going to use busted down wood walls, but I'm going to leave a little bit of space in the middle where the conival tree overlaps the turf. And I'm going to use two stone walls to mark where you would enter the plaza with the conival tree inside. I try really hard to give the feeling of enclosure with some of these builds without actually blocking them off. And I find that busted down walls really do a good job in that regard. I'm gonna stick some glass kitty coon statues on the outside of these corner builds. I'm just gonna nudge them between two moon rock walls. Yeah, honestly, the whole color scheme of this build was something that I never anticipated. It, it works really well. Check it out. You've got green trees, 
with pink part grass for some zones. And then in the corner zones, you've got pink carnival trees on top of green turf. And then in the middle, you got these pink lure plants surrounding more green meadow turf. So I'm glad that the color scheme stayed more or less consistent. The final thing I wanna do for this build is head on down to the caves in spring and catch some green spores from the mushroom forest so that we can color our glow caps. And here's the final look of the build. Feel free to steal any aspects of them. I mean, I just really, really enjoyed building this thing. I like these events because they don't add tons of new content. They just give you like a few new things to mess around with in your building. And honestly, for the late game, that's the kind of stuff that I really look forward to with these seasonal events. It's interesting because the more structures I added to the build, like lightning rods and berry bushes and moon dials, the harder it became to do the hide and seek game. I actually don't mind that the game is a little bit challenging. I mean, you still get plenty of lucky coins just from finding like three or four of the kit coons in the game. But if I find all nine of them, then I definitely feel accomplished. Anyways, there's the finished build. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope this gives you some ideas for how to build your nursery in the year of the cat coon event. Let me know what you've been building in the event, whether you like the event, if you have pics of your builds, feel free to join the discord and post them on our building channel. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.